My name is Bill McMacken, and we're celebrating the 50th high school reunion of Milford High, 1958. And uh, there was 130 or 31 from our class, and 21 have passed on to the next room. What I'm going to be doing tonight is just interviewing uh, some people, and here comes one right now. Hey, George, come on over. I'm Art. Art uh, got me involved in this. This is George Johnstone. He's the class president, old friend of mine. We camped together. And played Art's, basketball together. Uh, you played. I sat on the bench. <laughs> well, we were on the bench together, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, George was our class president and uh, gave a very kind of a touching speech here about happy days. And as Art said, he wanted some memories about Milford, not you. That's what right. The, not, not your so current So he wanted life. me to talk about Pat Kelly. Yes, right. Because uh, Pat and I used to, besides uh, sports together, we used to double date together and things. We'd have we'd have these uh, pizza parties. Now when you know we didn't have Domino's in those right. days, we'd get together with our dates and make our own pizzas. We'd have a ball, sneak into uh, you know, uh, drive-in theaters and things like that together. But when we were playing sport and played football, I don't know how many people knew this, but uh, I was the center, senior year. And how tall were you? About the same as I am now. Which is? About 6'2", six 6'3". Two, six two. <laughs> so anyway, so I, so I was the center in the football team, and he was the quarterback, right? And he would call a play, get up to the line, and if he would see that the defense was lined in such a way that he could sneak the ball further than the play that was called, he would, you know, he'd take the, you know, where he'd take the ball, he'd tap on my leg, either my right leg or my left leg, to let me know which way to block. And that would be his way of doing an automatic call at the line without anybody else knowing it got a lot of yardage that way. Really? But he's, he's really smart. You know, right? Jack Menzi, I interviewed Jack Menzi a couple weeks ago, and he said, you know, Pat was not the fastest guy or the most skilled guy, but he was the brightest player I ever had. He's very he smart. Gave, he gave, uh, well, he went to Annapolis. I mean, come on. He, he was, was the backup quarterback for Annapolis. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was the oh. backup quarterback for Annapolis. And uh, and also in high school, remember Niner? Or, of course. Right, I got government? kicked out of his class. No. <laughs> Bill McMahon. It would have been, got, it would have been know, good if I had done that at times. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I remember uh, Niner spending time. We had that uh, mock union, uh, union uh, UN meeting at, a, at some location other than Milford, that. right? I, I wasn't there, but I remember it. Well, I was one of the delegates. Represent, we were supposed to rep represent the U.S. And Pat was grilled by Niner to get ready to run for the uh, to uh, take over the UN, you know, what was it, uh, for the United Nations, it's not president, what is it, the uh, Secretary General? Secretary General, right. So he was getting groomed to do that, and came close, but didn't make it. But that's how smart he was. I mean, he was... Uh, well, he was a very bright guy. Very tragic what happened to him. He, do, he developed uh, Hodgkin's disease, right. which is totally curable today. Uh, but at that time, Annapolis, uh, the Navy let him graduate from Annapolis, but yeah. they wouldn't give him a commission. Yeah. And uh, Pat went to work for IBM, and I asked him what area he was working in in Annapolis. He said quartermaster for him. I said quartermaster for him. And he said, "Why not?" And he said, "Well, Bill, that's it's all big numbers. You know, that's what those quartermasters deal. They hear hundreds of millions of dollars, and that's what business does." So he was always ahead of everybody else. Yeah. So. Um, if, yeah for example, I would say talk about Jim Russell or Chink. I remember the story, Chink. I mean, you know, Chink was always in charge of the shop. You know, he said he had it. I mean, you couldn't get through shop door without Chink saying, you know, I mean, he had to. Remember Chink? I mean, he had it. Yeah, he was a guy. Okay, but Chink, remember, he went. He was reading the news, free press or some damn thing. He went through Watson's Builder Supply. He was on that curve that goes around there. He rolled right through their showroom. Yeah, Chink. I love him. Yeah, he's gone now. God, yeah, well, I, God love him, you know, I mean, I love this guy. So. Uh, I'm with George Johnstone, and George Johnstone's going to talk about Sharon. No, it's like, uh, in our senior year, the tradition was that the senior basketball, uh, the, the seniors in would play basketball game against the faculty, and it was always the men faculty. And traditionally, it was always basketball players, men basketball players, who were graduating who played in that game. And uh, in our year, we had Sharon Roberts 
and Jane Hodgins, who were great athletes, right. terrific athletes. And so for the first time in history, to my knowledge, we had those two play on our team. And they did great. And the fun part was watching what would happen when the men would follow the women and the students would go crazy. About these ah. guys following the gals. But it had never been happened before. So here we had two great athletes um, that I think it's really a shame they couldn't be here to share some stories with us. Uh, I'm here with uh, Linda McGee. That was her name in high school. Now Linda Benson. You don't recognize me. I'm much taller and much thinner now. Right, right. Linda, um, as Art said, this is not about your life now. It's about your remembrances of Milford, 1958. Yeah. And if you were out maybe in a month or two and somebody said Milford High, what's the first thought would, which would come in your mind? Good friends. Good friends. Good times. Uh, did you have a favorite teacher? Yeah, Reed Mathis. He was my favorite teacher. He was though. wonderful. He was great. He would say, students, the bell has rung. Yeah. <laughs> and did you have a teacher? Okay. I'm, uh, again, Bill McMahon. I'm with Barb Arnold. Barb, what's your married name? Franklin. Fra Fra of course I know that. Uh, okay, Barb, as Art said, this isn't about what your life is. What's your remembrance of Milford High? Milford was one of those eras where you just were happy to be there. You loved the school. You loved the kids. It was small, and it was a good time in your life. Well, I'm uh, interviewing Jim Edwards, and uh, Jim, um, I just uh, was cornered by Art McCafferty, and he said he'd like me to talk to you about uh, Tom Hubble, right. who actually was a good friend of mine also in high school. Good. Well, uh, the reason I wanted to say something about Tom is that Tom was a member of our class and uh, went to Vietnam, volunteered to go, uh, became a captain, went to the uh, Citadel in the South. Uh, the thing I remember about Tom so much is that he was a dedicated guy, and I just wanted to say how much we appreciated his effort and part, part of his, as, as a member of the, of the Armed Forces, and that I want to apologize to Tom to all the nasty things I used to say to him and kid him a lot, but he was really a great guy, and, and uh, I miss him, and I wish he was here. So, thanks. Uh, uh, Jim, did you ever go to the Vietnam War? Yes. Did you see Tom's name? I actually uh, took a rubbing, and I meant to bring it tonight, but I didn't. But I have a I have a video of it, so I'll, I'll uh, try to get it to somebody so everybody else can see it. Yeah. Uh, went there last year, and so uh, yeah, Tom was there. All right. So uh, it's I think he died just before Christmas in 1968. Well, I don't know. You know, he was such a gung he was just a gung ho guy. Whatever he did, and I was a good friend of his in high school. And he was an only child of some sort of elderly uh, parents, and uh, obviously, their, you know, his death was just took a tragic cold, cold, yeah. cold on him. Uh, Murphy, uh, she just passed away uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, she, uh, she uh, Louise and I graduated from college together, and uh, she came here in uh, 1952. And uh, she, that was the year before I came back from the service. And uh, later on, she met a guy named Dick Bowl, who was a junior high teacher and then a high school teacher. They got married. Uh, they were the most consistent people to always go to every class reunion, never missed. And, uh, but she uh, paid the price for being a smoker and got emphysema. And uh, I think it's been about a month ago or so that she passed away, had her funeral here. Mm -hmm. She was a tough teacher that we had, as you know, English teacher. And when I was the guidance counselor, and later on with the high school principal, I would go to college days on campuses. And we, almost without exception, every kid that was in college would tell me the, they hated Mildred Joslin when they were here. Every kid would tell me she was the best teacher I ever had. Uh, and the reason was, when they got into college, they realized that they knew more English than anybody who graduated from any other school.